Wow, a national master. National Master Frank. And we're playing a titled player. If he wants to put that bishop there. We're gonna maneuver our bishop here. Again, we don't want to take. And you'll see how people start to handle the stonewall at higher ratings is, you know, they, they basically just play it themselves. <laughs> they just, you know, that's what you do. There is some idea to take and take this pawn, so maybe a little tiny threat here. I mean, I want him to play e6, because then I will do that. We really want that. Our pawns are all in dark squares. Definitely bad for our bishop. But we have an idea to bring our bishop into the game like that. I don't think we actually mind the position opening up a little bit here. Start by taking this. I'm not sure what he's gonna take with. Probably bishop. Okay, a little bit surprising. I'm only doing this because I can defend it. And even if he wins it down the line, then he's played e6 and he's going to have weaknesses around his king. The only reason he's a little bit safe here is because he hasn't played that yet. Uh-huh. I can see what you want to do. Not gonna let him play rook f3, that's for sure. Queen takes, there's bishop e3, so definitely king takes. g5 is too many pawns on dark squares and blocking my bishop. Definitely not interested in g5. Bishop e1 to guard that guy. We're very happy to see that move. Yes, we are.
Queen F2, Bishop here. No, we we can't be doing that. Let's guard that guy. That bishop on c3. All right, so we've got it defended. <laughs> I have one extra pawn, yay. Queen here is the next move. Queen here takes takes bishop e3 b5. I think we go all the way here. So I'm not sure that he can take my queen which he understands. What about b5 now? Can he even catch that? He's gonna have to bring his queen back or something. Well, this is definitely a good sign. We wanna see that queen retreating. Play b3. Wow, I totally forgot that was a move. That's unpleasant. Highly unpleasant. I think this is a must play. That's really strong. That's not dangerous, but I mean, this guy is just dead. It's taking, a, I would say, too long. Probably played the best move. Um, Nice. That was a nasty bait. Unpleasant move, uh, Bishop G5. Oof. Hello, brah. Hey, just gonna make a coffee and wanted to wait for the masterpiece <laughs> to finish. What are you gonna do after Bishop D4? I hadn't got that far. It Jack, looked good. Uh, wasn't I have sure. Bishop yeah, D4, always. which I liked. Yeah. Um, Bishop D2 may be worth it to make him play that. 
Well, just like bishop b4, bishop b5, bishop d2 is funny. There's all these pawns, and you can still just go bishop d2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and none of them uh, can do anything. Four pawns and no way to stop yeah. me. That was impressive. This is our first title player. GG to Frank. Like I said, um, higher and higher rated, you know, basically you play against the stone wall. The number one thing is trade off the lights were bishops. And then he's establishing his knight here. And he's always going to have a better bishop than me based on these pawns later on. So, yeah, I mean, g4 is not my finest move, but position is probably equal-ish here. Um, we were kind of doing well here. But then, yeah, I completely forgot about that. That was a bit of an issue. And black should be much better here, but we uh, struggled effectively. Yeah, he really needed to go back here. I was going to play a bishop there, like king here and a bishop there. All right, the white pieces. Let's see. You know, and pay close attention to how people are handling the stone wall as we move into like 2100s, 2200s. Notice how it's far less effective than it has been. So it's not even just about watching how I play the stone wall as white. I mean, it's a great opening, but, you know, it's not going to serve you well past 2300. That's for sure. Or you at least have to know how to play other openings. And then you can bring out the stone wall in some specific cases. D5 is surprising, I would say. To me, that move is surprising. Let's stop knight E4. Go h3 next. There's no knight e4 coming. Mm-hmm. Are we in the business of stopping d5? Let's say no. Ninety five definitely looks looks like the plan. Bishop, we're gonna bring the rook over. Sort of wish that we had gone um, Bishop E one. Bishop B1 to H4 would be nice. We would just have all sorts of threats uh, down there. We still have a good position, but... This is more... Civilized. More civilized approach. We were kind of threatening G5. A little bit. Which I believe is what he understood. Which is why he played that. Knight takes. Queen takes E6. Should be the first thing calculated. G5, and I think our next move is knight f7, and queen takes e6. And f5 is the reason why I played g5, to make sure the knight wasn't there, so that f5 actually comes with a threat. Well, taking here, 
He's gonna have to block. Um, there is queen e7 check as well. This one. But obviously got a good position. I think starting with this never hurts. Jack. I don't think there's anything uh, too impressive we can do here. May have to just do the boring old mate, guys. Sorry to disappoint the fans. Oh, he's gone. Okay, DC, bro. Yeah, basically I have just mate on F7 no matter what. Maybe we would throw this in. Hit us with the rage quit. There we go. 2151. Yeah, he hit us with the old RQ. Don't be afraid to admit that's you as well. So, I mean, he should play D6. Um, D5 is just far too forgiving for this opening. No need to let me have the E5 square. Um, yeah, I was kind of thinking Bishop E1, H4. I think this is the main main plan. Um, I played Rook E1, maybe a little bit hasty. It's a great move, but I think Bishop E1 following the plans is what we should be doing. And although Knight F7 is tempting, I thought that G5 was good. All right. Here, we're gonna play e6. Um, as soon as knight c3 happens, white's kind of able to play e4, so I have to play f5 to make sure we stop that. c6, we don't wanna ever deal with knight to b5. g3, okay, very, uh, very direct approach. Knight here, knight takes c6, as usual. Alright, let's throw the knight in. If knight takes, we take back, and g5 may be an idea, bishop b4. I'm really looking at g5 here to try to trap this bishop, and I think we've just done that, haven't we? Which is kind of why, I mean, g3 and e3 always looks a little bit funny with that bishop there. Yeah, so he's he's still going to have a, a tough position. Like, it's not completely over or anything. We could just get rid of that knight. I think queen h4 is the good move. Stops queen h5, that's the key. And check, we just slide our king over. Yeah, so for me, I'm a little more particular. I would like to trade this knight for the knight rather than the bishop. Uh, that's a bit of an odd move. go to g6 but I think I may just settle for f7 and rook g8 now his rooks may start to become trapped here like h6 bishop here rooks are running out of space
Hmm. I think he's losing some kind of material here. He wants to move the bishop and play rook h3. So at least we know what he's up to. I think so, Bunglet. Keep it simple, rook g8. I was, you know, just checking. Bishop here, pawn there, both looked uh, pretty tricky. But I think simple is to just get rid of the rooks. I don't want to get too fancy. Could go here. Queen here, we have King F8, and he doesn't have any squares to go to. Re reroute this king, like definitely want a king on a safer square. Bishop to e7 is gonna hit that pawn. Trading the queens will definitely win the game, by the way, but I mean why the heck not? Ignore it. Now this is a threat. Take C5. Oh, this guy's really... I'm over here. No, I'm over here. Took out the little man. This was just a very successful stone wall, right? Like G5 and Black's already winning. So yeah, this just went well. But it is born off the back of G3, E3. People like to do this just to keep their bishop there. They don't want to take. And you'll notice that as we get to stronger and stronger opponents, most people leave their bishop here. They understand that it's not always the best to just take. You know, it helps the queen get out. Tricky piece one one one. Okay, we got e three. Probably want to play bishop d three. Next, c five always c three, but if someone ever takes, we always take with the e pawn. I think C5, C3 is even like very similar in the London system. It's just like a good reaction to have. So yeah, as soon as he's threatening E5, got to stop that. Got to put an end to that. Bishop G4, Knight F3.
castles. Hey, how about a move we haven't seen in a while? Queenie won. Getting out of the pin. One of our favorites. Really only use this move whenever you're dealing with this pin situation. I mean, H3 is a fantastic move, but... I always have a soft spot for Queenie 1. Time to get the knight in. Yeah, and again, we don't want to take that. That's one thing we want to avoid. Mm-hmm. Again, taking not what we want to do. So I am going to go back there. I can't go to C2. People love this move. Now E4 is obviously uh, very tempting, right? As soon as C4 happens, it's got to be a you know magnetic reaction that E4 is most likely your next idea. Just straight away. Play this. I'll need it at some point, and I kind of want to take the knight and play e5, but he can play pawn takes, which I don't know if I love. Okay. Now I'm thinking about stuff like this. I'm also looking at G5 because, hey, it's playable. Knight there, we're taking, should be winning a pawn. And it's pretty hard for him not to take here, I feel like. Now the game is far from over. Far from over it. That move probably brings it one step closer to being over them. Bring that rook back. My king wants to be on the central square. Rook A1, we just move our bishop. Also threatening that. G5H4. Here. I mean, there is g5. Uh, we can go around this way. Should probably take it.
course we have h4, but I think if we want to keep the pawn, we just go here. So that we can play king e5 after f5. Bishop a3 is tempting, but even him sacking at some point doesn't look that interesting to me. All the way, baby. All the way. Well, he gave us a piece there. We would have had to convert some kind of end game. But our stonewall went well. We won a pawn for nothing. If you move the knight, I mean, it looks scary. I think he's fine, but yeah, I was going to go here, knight f3. We have an attack coming. Let's take this stone wall to 2200. Can we get away with this? Do we have time for this? I'd like to say the answer is yes, but I'm not sure, actually. That's the move we like to see. Doesn't really slow down our plan. Oh, C4, never a good move. <laughs> we know that. Okay, so definitely yes, this is the intention. But that's gonna put the knight on F6 in a pin. So we won't be unhappy to see it. Really feels like e4 is the move here. Really feels like it. Thanks, uh, StormMG, for the 17 months. Appreciate the reset, man. Uh, e4. I think f5. Maybe the one I try. Hmm. That is surprising. I think you pretty much never want to allow white to do this. Um, yeah, the knight goes here, but we'll just play queen e2. Um, knight there. Suppose that comes with a threat. Yeah, it comes with a threat of taking the pawn on e5 because there is a pin here. But this isn't so bad. It's more important that we just get the pawn there. F takes. And, you know, queen e2, rook f1. Definitely a king h1 needs to, <laughs> needs to happen at some point in this game. That looks like a good move. I don't think I can take it and allow him to have that e-file. That doesn't feel right. Let's 
Whoa, hang on. Now why did he not take? That looks like a miss. Let's go for this plan now. Yeah, Shax, I definitely want to play King H1. You're not wrong there. It's a good preparatory move. But H4, H5 is definitely, definitely very strong. H6, forcing the bishop back. Not too pleasant. I'm going to use the f4 square, so... Knight here, probably queen here, and then knight f4. Should we throw that in? I'm gonna say yes. I think tactics are somewhere here. They're lurking. The bishop on h8 is just uh, doing nothing, so that's why I'm fairly convinced there are there are some kind of tactics. Ooh, that is surprising. You're telling me this doesn't work? What the hell? That's amazing. All right, I'll do it the slow way. Bishop f5 is a threat. Very difficult to prevent. Right now, this move can be met by that. Bishop getting to f3. Trade the knights off. Now this rook is pretty much my only piece not activated. Surprised that he didn't uh, trade knights there. Rook F1 looks pretty deadly. This is like a kind of known way to advance these pawns, which always works pretty well. Should 
GG. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite like pre-move things. It's like three pawns and a rook. You'll often get this. And you always want the rook in the middle and the king just sheltered by both pawns and it's unstoppable. You just like, you can always shift to the entire formation up the board. So like this, you could have this down here and you would still be able to like, just slowly move up the board. Here, once you get this move, you can pre-move this, then you can pre-move this, then pre-move this and this. And like all those moves can happen pre-moved. And okay, if the rook's on this side, then you use this pawn to push. If the rook's on the other side, then you would use this pawn. That's the only thing to keep in mind. And I, I know, by the way, that he's about to play this move. I know that. But it's just the pattern. Yes, you will eventually do this to give up your rook. But he could have done that even here. Let's say he did this. Uh, and this, I would do this. And you just win the king and pawn end game easily. So even though I know he's about to do that, here I pre-move king c7, because if he went like here, here, I didn't want him winning this pawn. I could probably come close to checkmating, but at this point I think I need to make a queen with both pawns. Like I need two queens. With only one and a half seconds, probably not enough time. D4. Bishop D3 to get there first. Knight E4. Well, okay. There's no Queen H4, so Knight E4 doesn't make a lot of sense there. Of course, E4 was the very good move there. To play but we're not really we're not really doing that kind of stuff this guy is all about keeping that bishop there it's like <laughs> it's about the only thing he's done this game not going to trade queens here, I think. This is uh, pretty much like resigning. Maybe G4 is an idea. Maybe. Yeah, these moves are always annoying because we've got two good replies here. This should be seven wins the rook, but shatters our pawns. So I guess we're going with this one. Rook B8, Queen C5. Eh. Yeah. Our pawns are beautiful pawns, but okay. Can't say, uh, can't say no. That's surprising. You didn't take this one. What the heck? Yeah, that is really weird. Problem is my center is falling apart. Bench of the man. I, I just didn't like pawn takes d4. Looked annoying. I think 
we just go here. To be honest, if he takes, we have that, so maybe we can get away with this. Yeah, B4 dropping C3 was what, I, what I've been trying to avoid here. Rook behind the pawn. If he trades rooks, I think it's lost, so. He can do it, but I don't think it works. this hit that also guard d4 King here and Rook here will maybe threaten some mates, so this might trade the um, Rooks by force. Pretty much what we want. Yeah. That should be GG. That'll do it. His opening was actually not so great. Um, we got e4 and white's all, already a bit better here. We don't need to play e4, we could go knight in, we could bring our bishop around, but this was a very successful stonewall because although he's controlling that square beautifully here, in two moves, he needs an answer and he should have maybe brought reinforcements. So after I play knight d2, he's losing control of e4. All right, well I have the privilege of hitting 2200 with white pieces, yes. e4 is still not a threat. Just go here. Rook there doesn't actually do very much. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think there's many threats here. He lost the pawn, yeah, after an 84, he was kind of in trouble in the opening. Lost the pawn relatively early. And then we ended up here. All the end games should be convincing uh, for white. Guess he wants to go here. Um, it's probably not that concerning. Takes, then his bishop ends up there. Do we want to allow that? Ah, uh, yes. Because this forces the queens off. He thinks he's happy because he won this pawn, but in fact, he's not happy at all. Because he's now traded queens. We're in an end game. He's losing another pawn. Even if he wasn't losing the pawn, just bringing the king in was sufficient. Now the game is over, over. <laughs> Just gotta check if I'm gonna take the bishop back. Understood, understood. Makes a lot of sense. Just gotta double check. You never know. You never know. Mouse slip, a little King F3 action. There we go. We hit 2200. I don't think my plan is to take this series much past 2200. So I'm probably gonna leave it here. Um, which is usually a. Uh, that's usually the reading I, I end off at. Wow, look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another Stonewall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.